welcome to our special coverage focus group. Today we want to talk about China's much anticipated rural land reform. And we're now in a city called Chengdu in China's Sichuan province. And this is one of those pilot cities that are experimenting with more radical reform when it comes to China's rural land use. And joining me in this beautiful farm here are Professor Liu Renqiu from Sichuan University and Professor Tao Ran from Renmin University and a group of local residents and they're going to be joining our discussion as well. Welcome gentlemen. So one of the core issues that is being debated now when it comes to China's rural land use is the lack of property rights in China's rural society. Simply put, correct me if I'm wrong here, farmers have fewer property rights than city dwellers. For example, city dwellers can buy, can sell, and mortgage the usage right of their property. Farmers cannot. So the inequality has been the key reason for the income disparity between urbanites and farmers, am I right? Uh, that's partly right because you know if farmers can be allowed to buy and sell their land and move to cities more freely, actually that will help to boost their income. But the key reason for China's urban rural disparity is still you know there are too many farmers in China's countryside. We have an urbanization rate of fifty percent. Basically, in most developed countries is ninety percent. So we need another forty percent of uh, you know, farmers moving into the cities so that farmers who are left behind can operate on large scale of land and, uh, you know, uh, earn higher income. And what do you think needs to be done here? The key issue is that, you know, we need to settle down those migrant workers in the cities on a permanent space and also allow them to sell their land freely when they leave the cities or when they leave the countryside. All right. So, Professor Liu, you're an expert on I want to lean on your expertise here. Tell us more about this program. How does it work? How does it generate bigger profits for farmers? Chongzhou not only involves the reform of land system, but also involves the reform of agricultural operation system. Uh, in many cases, people think that everything will be okay only if the land rights of farmers are insured and registered and their uh, arable lands are transferred. But that is not true. Actually, in Chengzhou, uh, besides uh, land circulation, Chengzhou also built some systems to support the cooperatives, uh, land share cooperatives, uh, such as agricultural service, uh, socialized service, agricultural uh, financial service, agricultural technical support system, and agricultural products, uh, public brands. Uh, which is called one plus four model. Uh, the second difference of Chongzhou pilot program is that Chongzhou insists on planting greens. That is very important to the food security of China. The system of agricultural professional manager not only improves the efficiency of agricultural uh, production and increase the income of uh, farmers, uh, but also uh, creates jobs and attract young and educated farmers to uh, come back to the agriculture. That is interesting. We understand you are a professional rural land uh, manager here. This may be the first time many people have even heard about this profession. Tell us what you do. Um, what's your role in this process? An agricultural land share cooperative has really solved our employment problems and freed up the labor force so that many peasants can work in the cities. In addition, the establishment of the cooperatives has increased our incomes and strengthened the collective economic organization. Let's, let's also talk about challenges, all right? I want to hear this from our local resident and I want to give you a uh, chance to respond to that. Tell us. What, what's the most difficult part for them? Our first concern is to maximize revenue, so we have to consider the risks, including poor infrastructure and market risks associated with revenue reduction. These have somewhat limited the development of cooperatives, but I believe that with better supporting facilities, problems will be resolved. Alright, I want to give a chance to our professors to respond to that. The, the cooperatives' competitiveness and their ability to withstand risks, uh, their lands are fragmentary and uneven, uh, which will affect the efficiency of land operation. 
and the main lack of uh, market information and other professional resources. So government should uh, carry out land consolidation and uh, in, uh, strengthen the agricultural uh, the construction of agricultural in infrastructure and uh, encourage professional organizations to provide more agricultural services. We have another gentleman uh, have something to say here. Before I set up the agricultural land share cooperatives, our land was entirely transferred to managers. The three problems with the land transfer are peasants sometimes do not get the rent when the lease ends, peasants are worried about whether the manager will take the money when there are profits, and the third is that the destruction of arable land is a very big problem during the production process. When the lease ends, the land is nearly incapable of being farmed. The managers often do not understand farming and make no profits. In one case, a manager leased the land for three years, only paying rent for two years, and ran away in the third year. Then the farmer sued him and won the case. However, he had no money to pay the peasants. With the establishment of the land share cooperatives, peasants don't have to worry about what to plow during the year and don't worry about whether or not to come back when harvest season comes. And there's no worry about whether or not they can get a bonus. So you've heard about the complaints. Your response to that? They need better land more consolidated land that I think, you know, uh, uh, the government can help, but they can also consolidate it by themselves if the land can be, you know, uh, transacted more freely, if the land tenure can be more secured. Uh, and the farmers who migrate out of the countryside can actually settle down on in cities on a per more permanent base, they can actually sell or lease sell their land or lease their land on a long term so that farmers' cooperative will have incentive to consolidate the land. So land consolidation can be either done by the government or by the uh, cooperatives themselves. And another issue about financial support, if land can be transacted freely, can be you know purchased or sold on market freely, then it could be used as collateral. So Farmers or farmers' cooperative, they can use this land as collateral to borrow money from banks and expand their operation. All right, and one last question before I go. Is there any lessons can we draw from other success, perhaps other countries? Yes, in international situations, actually, uh, you have uh, in many countries, farmers' association. Okay, that help farmers to protect their rights, to provide technical service, to provide marketing service. Uh, so, because agriculture is a business that needs, you know, collaboration, that needs financial resources and also land consolidation that cannot be done by individual farmers. Uh, in China's Taiwan province, actually, the farmers' association is very strong. And they have helped to channel the government funding, you know, to individual households, and they have helped farmers to uh, uh, market their, you know, goods. Uh, that actually has been very, you know, uh, uh, vital for Taiwan's agricultural competitiveness. All right, and this new round of rural land reform, I hope, is expected to boost uh, social equity and production efficiency here in China. Well, that concludes our edition of Focus Group here. Thank you so much for joining us here, gentlemen. Back to the studio now.